Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Shane Alsop. I'm the Community Engagement Assistant for eLife, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar, An Introduction to Society for Early Career Researchers. So we're using both Otter AI and Zoom for our transcription services today. So to enable the transcription in Otter, simply click to the top left of your screen and choose Custom Live Streaming Service, and then click View Stream on Custom Live Streaming Service. This will display the transcript on a separate window, which you can X out of at any point. Um, alternatively, you can enable the live subtitles in Zoom by clicking on the bottom center toolbar and clicking Show Subtitle. And then to disable them again, you can click Hide Subtitle at any point. But if you have any difficulty setting this up, just let us know in the chat box, also in the bottom toolbar in Zoom. Brilliant. So today uh, we have Godwin's Onru Chakwa, who will be moderating the session. Godwins is the previous community and outreach manager for Society, but now the head of communities for eLife. And we're joined today by two brilliant panelists, Prachi Abasti, the associate professor of cell biology at Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth, and Leslie Anson, the director of Biophysics CoLab. So each of our panelists will deliver a presentation of around 10 minutes, after which we'll be followed by Q&A, where we ask them your questions. And we'll also circulate a very brief feedback form uh, throughout the webinar just so that you can help us to improve on these events in the future. But before we begin, I'd just like to start with a bit of housekeeping. So eLife's code of conduct is in full effect during this webinar. So we ask that you please be respectful, honest, inclusive, accommodating, appreciative, and open to learning from everyone else. We ask that you don't attack, demean, disrupt, harass, or threaten others or encourage such behavior. We reserve the right to ask anybody to leave and or to deny access to a subsequent webinar. And most importantly, if you feel uncomfortable or unwelcome at any point during this meeting, we ask that you report it via email to eLife Safety Team at Proton Mail, uh, and all reports will be handled with discretion by our safety team. So we'll be recording today's webinar and we'll make it available on YouTube at a later date. And if you have any questions or run into any difficulties at any point, just use the chat function and send me a question or a message and I'll do my best to help. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll finish the uh, webinar with a Q&A session. Um, so you're invited to ask your questions throughout the course of the event. Just use the chat box in the bottom and Godwin's will read your name and the question during the Q&A that follows the presentations. Uh, so without further ado, it's my pleasure to invite Godwin's to introduce Society and our panelists today. Yeah, thanks Shane um, for that. <clears throat> Hi everyone, um, welcome to this um, webinar to this afternoon. Sorry, I'll be coughing a lot because I'm a little bit um, under the weather with COVID. So if I cough and disturb you, I'm really sorry about that. I'll try not to, um, I'll try to mute myself when I'm not doing anything. So we're talking about society today. I'll be very brief because the main thing we need to hear are from the two speakers who, whom we have here today. Um, Leslie will be speaking from the uh, from the uh, perspective of a group, and then um, Pratch will be speaking as a user. I will just briefly be introducing um, Society to you. Um, normally we say Society is the home of public preprints. Um, Society is an application <coughs> enabling networks of scholars to efficiently discover, openly curate, and evaluate relevant preprints. So that is um, the whole foundation of Society is to help with, um, scholars to find what they are looking for, um, in an efficient manner without having to go all over the place. It's an aggregator. Um, Society was um, built and is operated by a team in eLife um, since May 2020. And we work on it on a daily incremental process um, using feedback that comes from researchers. So our vision is a future where a diverse global community of scientists produces results that are trusted and open for the benefit of all. That means that with this platform, with this tool, anyone and everyone in the scientific community can contribute and pro provide their work for others to see and comment on. So the whole process is built around the published review curate, which I mentioned earlier. And normally I'll be using the term PRC. For that, um, for us to pro progress that, this is where society comes in very handy. On society, you find a lot of um, open reviews, which um, Leslie will be talking to us about. And society particularly focuses on the review and the curate aspects of that. So what happens in society? There are groups, um, we, we use the term groups, and um, sometimes people will refer to them as editorial communities. 
there are currently 20 groups on site and we have more in the pipelines to add. All of them do um, review preprints and provide those reviews openly. You can read them. The tool site application is just a platform that brings all of this together. So you don't have to go <clears throat> to different um, websites to find those reviews and read them. And as, as I said, let's be talking more about those activities. And um, one of the advantages of this is that on site, you can then find uh, multiple evaluations um, by different groups. They have not spoken to each other, but it happened that they have all reviewed one article and provided their different perspectives on it, which enriches the scientific work that goes on. Also, we have the other um, persona, which is users, who can um, create and curate their own list. And on that aspect, um, Prachi will be, you know, sharing her experience of using this um, over the last, uh, would I say over the last year exactly, and uh, this month. And um, we've been building a lot into that, as Sam should explain to you. The other thing we've added to um, society to enrich the experience of users is we have this page called Society Feed. Is a, a, a live stream of what is going on on society, who is updating their um, list, who is um, providing the latest um, reviews, and all that. Um, you can go on society, you click on the um, society feed menu, and, and you can see that in front of you. This is how you can reach society. <clears throat> so, now to welcome our speakers for the day. Let me introduce Prachi is an associate professor of um, biochemistry and cell biology <clears throat> at the Jesuit School of Medicine at Dartmouth College, as well as the co-founder and, and incoming chief scientific officer of Arcadia Science, a research and development company experimenting with new ways to do and share a science through the study of emerging research <coughs> organisms. She also advocates for preprints pre and open science as the president of ESAP Bio and via the board of directors of eLife, where she is the chair. So it's good to see you again, Prachi. May I now invite um, Prachi to please share her experience. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Godwins. Um, and really happy uh, to be with you today. And um, uh, tell everyone here who's in attendance a little bit about my experience working um, um, on society and actually using it for many of the workflows that we typically have um, for my lab and for my organization. And um, uh, and I wonder if I'm unable to actually post to anyone other than the host and the panelists, but I'm wondering if um, either Shane or Godwins could actually post to the attendees also the link to my... Um, I, pasted it here for us, the link to my society reading list um, uh, so that everyone else can be looking at the same thing. I don't have any slides, but I think um, everyone should be able to access it. Um, so, you know, I think I wanted to start by giving you an idea of how, you know, some of the problems that, that we're facing as researchers and how society sort of tries to solve some of those issues. So I think all of us are very well aware that there is a movement towards, you know, in the, in the publishing landscape, and I think a very positive direction as a result of, of preprints being uh, available that, uh, you know, author-led publishing where we as researchers can post um, our work online and it can see the light of day when we are ready for it to uh, do so. Um, and after which um, any number of innovations, um, peer review and, and curation and all of those things can happen on top of that layer. Um, so that really prevents any sort of bottleneck and, and gatekeeping from um, allowing our science to, to become available which um, and available to everyone so that all, all um, um, everyone can read it. I think this is a huge, huge positive step for all of science. Um, and, um, you know, I think I greatly benefit myself from being on, you know, the cutting edge of science by reading people's earliest, um, you know, work on in the form of preprints. Now, uh, you know, obviously that is a little bit different than the sort of, um, you know, um, pre-publication review system that we're used to at, at journals. So in this case, it's basically post-publication review where the science is posted first, and then there's other types of, you know, review and curation that happen on top of that. And, and, and one of the challenges that that poses is that there's a huge now amount of, of literature that's sort of un- um, you know, binned or, you know, uh, unfiltered, which is, I think, also still a positive thing, you know, um, evaluation and expertise 
um, lives wherever it lives. And, and I think the only sensible thing to do rather than sort of cherry picking aspects of, of work that can be um, you know, evaluated is to make it publicly available so that all the expertise can uh, be brought to bear on top of that work. So now, you know, um, I think this is again, very uh, a very uh, um, positive feature, but that, that generates a little bit of a challenge because we don't have you know full infrastructure and and luckily that is being built around preprints um uh with with many of the people in um, participation today um but you have this sort of fire hose of literature and there's still you know how do we find all of that evaluation how do we get that curation to happen um you know figure out how to organize that literature in a way that it sort of doesn't exist in this new era Right. And so I, mean, I think many of you are probably familiar as scientists in, in actually, um, you know, trying to find new things to read, sharing what you're interested in reading with your colleagues, with your lab members, um, your lab mates. Um, and, and often you have very sort of different ways of sharing that. Twitter is a way that I've, I discover a lot of, of preprints and, and discover the majority of my reading materials either through BioArchive directly or, um, you know, through, through Twitter from, um, you know, amplification through other people that I follow. Um, and then often in my workflow, at least, what I end up doing is that I, you know, find preprints in any number of different ways that, that happen to, I happen to come across, and then I end up sending it to a lot of people. So I either put it in my, uh, you know, Slack group for my lab and send it to um, students and postdocs in the lab, or I will, you know, it within my um, other organizations, share it with other scientists um, or tweet it out myself uh, if I have something to say about it. And that means that, you know, I have this sort of hodgepodge of, of, you know, ways in which I'm sharing the things that I find are really interesting and why I find them interesting. And so, side, you know, enter society. Society is something that is solving um, a number of my problems all at once, um, in which I'm able to sort of consolidate you know, all of the things that I'm really interested in reading, annotate those things directly as a, um, you know, for the reasons why I find those, those pieces of work um, interesting, important, um, questions I have about it, things that I'd like to uh, note about the, those pieces of work, and they can all live in one place um, and you know, it, in one feed. Um, my students or anybody else who's interested can subscribe to that feed, um, and then um, uh, that gets continually updated as I add more annotations. So, um, if uh, I think Shane has shared that that link to my uh, my reading list, and what you'll see on there, I'm pulling it up now. What you'll see on there is uh, a list of different preprints, and below it, you'll see my annotations for why I find them exciting. A lot of them are my excited exclamations for 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 um, you know why I found um, each of these pieces of work of particular interest. Um, and so it, it really is nice to be able to actually see them all in one place. Um, I think my, my students uh, have given a lot of feedback that they actually appreciate being able to go back and look at all of them in one list instead of scattered all throughout 15 different Slack channels and emails and all the other places that um, these things typically live. Um, and then the, um, you know, so I think this is one way in which we might start think might think about having sort of curation of the literature, where we see, have you know this big bin of preprints. It's just one. It's all in one bucket, um, and then thinking about how we might be um, interested for you know different parties that might be interested in curating. And and you can see on society that there's a number of different groups that do evaluation of preprints, and all of it lives on society. Um, this is sort of the other use case. I think you know um, COVID has given us a, a really good example where you know of course we have you know vaccines and in, um, you know, in, in months and not in years or decades because people shared all their work in the form of preprints. But then, of course, we all can't be virologists and immunologists. So it's really important to us as uh, readers of the literature to sort of understand, you know, how experts on this field think about the preprints that are being put, put, put out there, right? And so, and as Godwin's noted, Typically, that evaluation lives in a number of different places. Even on BioArchive, you can find comments on like fifteen different places on the on the um, on the page, whether it's by comments or living in the drawer that sits on the right, and the trip reviews or other types of community reviews. There's a number of different places all of these things live, even on BioArchive. But then, of course, there are an amazing you know proliferation of groups that are doing this evaluation, and I think that is an extremely positive thing. Um, people innovating in different ways of peer review on top of preprint and that all with different models and different types of review, all, some of them are more modular, some of them are more comprehensive, um, the expertise is wide ranging. And it is, of course, as a reader, really helpful to not have to 
go to 18 different websites. I think the, the distributed nature of this evaluation is extremely positive. The heterogeneity is extremely a good thing, in my opinion, that it's good to have a lot of different evaluators that think about this in different way, that participate, that different have different areas of expertise. All of these things are extremely good. So the, you know, the goal is not to consolidate the review necessarily, but to actually allow readers to find it all in one place, no matter how you know, heterogeneous it is or what form it takes. And so that's the one thing I really you know, appreciate about society is that it's actually allowing that distribution of experiments to take place, that you know, the distributed nature of experiments to take place so we can find better, more effective ways of doing um, evaluation and then bring it all in uh, together in a way that's actually useful to the reader, right? So I think this is a huge, huge benefit um, of society and allows us to sort of find the literature sort of evaluation first, you know, rather and for things, if you want to say, which, which are the, um, you know, pieces of work that, that have substantive comments, you can see that on, you can see that on society. Um, so I think all of these things are extremely, um, you know, good developments. And so, you know, I really encourage everyone to start thinking about, you know, if these are problems that you yourself have to solve, <laughs> you know, in, in sh you know, sharing, you know, collecting, for example, even the things that you're interested in reading, as Godwin's mentioned, you can keep your own private lists in, a, you know, um, as well society. Um, but and, and then you have or you can have a public one like mine where where other people can follow your um, follow your list. And then um, and then, of course, if you're really interested in seeing what other people thought of work that might be perhaps a little bit outside your field, something you can't yourself evaluate, but are interested in seeing what evaluation of that work is on top of preprints, you can find those things on society as well. So, um, yeah, so I think in in my experience in, in doing this you know, curation, um, actually trying to um, have all of the, um, you know, work that I'm interested in reading all in one place. I've actually gone back several times just to, you know, it's often I think you guys will all experience the, um, coming across work and you feel it looks it sounds familiar you're not sure if you've read it before um and and actually having a place where you can go back and see you know your own notes on on something that you you've read is also a really um, nice benefit and having it having it um, live in one place so i think any a lot of people have reference managers but um it's kind of nice to have this be in in a way that that um you know other people can follow and you can probably imagine that there might be you know maybe it's your advisor you're interested in following what they're reading or, or somebody else in your field or somebody um, outside your field who is an expert in uh, you know, a topic that you're really interested in if you're trying to move into a new area of science. I think that's another sort of use case where you're, um, you know, the science lands us wherever it lands in whatever field we land in. And, and sometimes we have to get up to speed on a new, new area and are trying to um, understand what's on the leading edge and, and seeing what other people are reading is, is always, I think, sometimes um, of interest. And so I think I'll leave my comments there. I'm happy to answer any other questions um, when we get to the Q&A period. And now I'll invite um, Leslie, who is the director of Biophysics Collab. Um, Biophysics Collab is one of the group on society. After completing a BSc in Physiology Science Sciences, Leslie studied auditory neuroscience for her PhD at the University of Bristol. <clears throat> she moved to University College London to work on the structure and function of glutamate receptors in the brain. In 1999, Leslie became an editor for the journal side, journal Nature, where she was responsible for selecting molecular neurobiology research for publication and overseeing the biology, <coughs> biology component of Nature's review program. She then launched and led Nature Communications through its inaugural five years for funding and funding an editorial and publishing consultancy, Anson Scientific. Most recently, she has been working with the Biophysics community to launch Biophysics Collab and experiment to innovate in the publishing space using Publish Review Curate, which we usually refer to as BRC. <clears throat> so welcome to. Thank you very much, uh, Godwin, for, for that invitation. And, um, and, and thank you for the invitation to, uh, to talk today about Biophysics Collab. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here. And, um, and, and I look forward to, uh, to all, all your questions at the end. So Biophysics Collab is experimenting with the publish review curate model of publishing, as, as, as Godwin's has already explained. Um, this is something that was proposed uh, by Stern and O'Shea back in 2019. So not, not that long ago, actually. Um, 
And it, it's called Publish, Review, Curate because uh, the process uh, starts with, with publication as a preprint. And, and that's already happening, you know, on, on many different preprint servers now. Um, and it's becoming more and more popular. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's growing in popularity exponentially. So um, this, this has, you know, was already in place when, when we started to, to think about our experiments. Um, the review pass is, uh, is, is something that preprints essentially uh, allow us to, to do really very easily and openly uh, in the public domain. Um, and then curation, um, for those who, who aren't so familiar with the term, is, is something that involves essentially, um, um, in this context at least, um, I describe it as communicating the interest uh, or relevance of particular preprints to particular communities. Um, so that, that's, that's how I, I, I usually describe published review curates, at least the, the way we're looking at it. And uh, we you know, decided um, to, to start an experiment in, in, in PRC. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, as, as has already been discussed, I'm, you know, there are many others innovating in this space as well and, and in very different ways. And I think that's great because um, it's only by, you know, by testing the, the different ways in which this could work that we will, you know, find a, a, a really efficient way of, of potentially uh, driving forwards PRC in, in a in a much greater context. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is essentially what, what we're doing at, at Biophysics Colab, and that could be very different from, from what others are doing. So why are we doing this? We're doing this because we really believe that PRC can deliver better peer review, um, faster communication of research, and, and also equity and inclusivity in, in the way that knowledge is exchanged. Um, so we think that better peer review can result from this because it gives us an opportunity for peer review to be open and constructive and not adversarial. Um, we believe it can be much higher quality because in our case, at least, it's led very much by the community for the community. And it's open and transparent. There are no black boxes, no, uh, no underlying questions about what might have been going on. It's all been done uh, out in the open for, for everybody to see. We believe it can allow us to achieve much faster communication of work because preprints already allow this. So that, that you know, faster communication can be in the form of preprints. Um, but there can also be, um, you know, we can also achieve faster communication of peer reviewed work as well. Um, and, and this is what I'm going to be explaining to you. This is uh, essentially what we're doing. Um, and we believe um, that we can achieve better equity and inclusivity and in knowledge exchange, um, both for readers, because um, papers um, and, and the reviews of these papers and, and how they're curated is freely and publicly available but also for authors, because um, it gives us an opportunity uh, to allow peer review and curation to be accessible to all and to be independent of kind of binary decisions for, for journals, um, you know, that are often judged by very flawed metrics. And that's not, uh, you know, something that the, the journals have asked for, but that, that is, you know, unfortunately how a lot of them are judged. So, Society is allowing us to, to do several uh, different things actually in this PRC space. So first of all, um, it's allowing us to identify published preprints. So we identify published preprints in, in many ways. Sometimes authors tell us about them. Sometimes a, a reader may tell us about an interesting preprint, maybe something that we've noticed on, on BioArchive or Research Square or you know, other preprint servers. Um, but interestingly, um, I, I've been working with uh, Society just, just the last couple of weeks on a new recommendation tool, which is a, a fantastic way of, of surfacing uh, preprints that might be interesting to, to our community. And, uh, you know, this recommendation tool, if you feed it with you know, information about the kind of articles that we're interested in, it, it'll, it'll uh, relay uh, back to us um, suggestions for other preprints that we also, you know, that we might want to read. So. 
Um, that's something that's uh, not available yet for, for uh, the public on society, but uh, we're really excited about it. So it. It really works incredibly well. So society allows us to identify published preprints. Society is also allowing us to communicate preprints that we think could be of potential interest to our community, in this case, the biophysics community. Uh, and we're doing this by means of a reading list. Um, and so this is, is already um, active um, on um, society. And um, I, I, I believe Shane may have uh, hopefully uh, shared um, the link to our society page. Um, if, if he hasn't done already, I'm sure he, he will soon, but um, this is a link to um, our group page on society, uh, where we have a list of, uh, of articles that, that we've endorsed, um, articles that we've evaluated. But in our about page, we also have a link to um, um, articles that are being read by Biophysics Colab, which is essentially a reading list. Um, and um, so, the, this is how we communicate preprints that we think are going to be of interest to our community. Um, and then CITE also allows us to publicly display the products of peer review alongside um, the articles that you know, these, these products relate to. So uh, we display reports um, on, on the preprints that we have peer reviewed. Um, these reports will contain the identities of the reviewers if they happen to have signed the report. Um, our reports are, in our case, we've chosen to, uh, to communicate to the authors and also publicly display consolidated reports. So these are reports that are produced after, after the individual reviewers have produced their individual reports and then a discussion takes place and a, a consolidation occurs. And, and we actually sent just one report to the author with essentially just one set of recommendations. Um, these reports also explain revisions that we feel will be essential uh, to be uh, addressed in order for us to be able to endorse the work. Um, and also uh, a, a series of optional suggestions authors may consider, they may consider them now, they may consider them in the future, but um, it, it's entirely up to them. But just, you know, thoughts that, uh, you know, our reviewers raise that we think are helpful to pass on to authors. Um, um, and we can also, uh, alongside the articles that we've peer reviewed, we can also display the author's responses. So all these um, items, if you like, <laughs> all, all the products of our peer review uh, are available by uh, clicking on uh, our list of evaluated articles, um, clicking on the articles themselves, and, and, and then Underneath the abstract, you can see article activity feed, and, and this is where we can see where you can see our, our, our consolidated reports, um, the author's response, if, if there is one at this time, and, um, and also our evaluation statement. So this is the, um, the, the fourth thing that society allows us to do is curate the preprints that um, we feel have passed our peer review process. So if we feel that the results support the conclusions, which essentially means that if we feel that all the revisions that we consider to be essential for our endorsement have been addressed satisfactorily, then we will endorse that preprint. Um, and we will do that by posting an endorsement statement, um, which describes the interesting findings. It describes them in a nutshell, in a sentence or two. It also tries to explain why we feel these, uh, these findings are interesting and, and important. And, and crucially also who these findings will be of interest to, the people that they will be of interest to, or perhaps the communities that they will be of interest to, or maybe, you know, if it's a, a really landmark paper, you know, that, that the fact that these findings will be interested, of interest to, you know, society as a whole. So, um, and um, uh, sorry, I, sh I should have mentioned that um, all the articles that we've endorsed are actually uh, listed separately in a separate list and, and just for ease of, of use, ease of access. So um, this is a second list that we have on our page, which is endorsed articles. And uh, essentially, if you click on that, you can see a list of all the articles that we've endorsed. And, and by clicking on any one of those articles, 
um, our endorsement date statement is, uh, is, is would appear at the top of the article activity feed with the author's response underneath and and the consolidated peer review portal peer review reports <laughs> underneath that. So it's essentially um, um, it, it's um, the order in which these appear is essentially the order in which they happen with uh, the most recent at the top. So it's a it's a really uh, efficient way of, of, of displaying our activity. Um, the activity of our group on society. So um, I, I've sort of begun to talk about this a little bit already, but just just uh, just to reiterate and, uh, and and highlight that there are many advantages that that society brings to our uh, to our group as we're innovating in uh, in the PRC space. So it allows us to post content. It allows us to post the uh, the fruits of our labour. Um, and it's really easy for us to do that. So once um, any of these items, you know, either the, the, the report or the author's response or our endorsement statement, once we posted that content in Hypothesis, Society finds us. We Society finds it. Sorry, we don't need to do anything else. Um, Society will will surface that that information. It will link it to to the preprint in question and display it as, as I've just described um, on our lists, which are on our group page. Um, Society has allowed us to uh, to begin experimenting with PRC much much quicker than we would have done otherwise. Um, you know, if if Society wasn't around, we would have needed to develop our own platform to to showcase our activity. So, um, and and that's um, you know that that's no mean feat. That's that's a, that would be a considerable amount of development. So it's it it was we were lucky. It was already in place, and um, you know we've been uh, hugely lucky to to work with Society to. Uh, to be able to showcase what we've been doing. Um, it also allows us, as, as, as perhaps you so elegantly um, explained, to collect the, the products of our activity in, in one place. So for us, for example, anybody who's interested in biophysics can, you know, can come to our page and, and very quickly see um, at least some of the articles that, that we think are interesting and, and find out why we think they're interesting and also find out which ones that we're endorsing. Now, now this is not comprehensive. It's by no means comprehensive at the moment. This is a very small scale experiment and it's uh, essentially limited by the number of, of people that are involved in the group. Um, but it is something that we're, you know, we're, we're trying to expand, you know, we're always looking for to recruit um, new scientists to, to help us in our endeavor. Um, but uh, essentially, you know, a biophysicist in the future, hopefully will be able to come to this page and, and find, you know, find work that they may be interested in or collected in, in one place. And, and I think also um, what's really nice um, is that Society is helping to bring preprint review into the mainstream as well and, um, and highlighting the benefits of, of PRC and, and preprint review in particular to, to the wider community. So uh, yeah, I, I hope I've, I've, I've explained what we're doing and, uh, and how Society is, is helping us. And I look forward to, to your questions. Thank you so much for that, Leslie. <clears throat> yeah, so thanks a lot. And um, with all that that Leslie and Prachi has said, I just want to actually make it known to everyone that no fee is being collected, it's all free. So if you want to host your list, if you want to <clears throat> host your editorial community and society, it's wholly, wholly free, like completely. There's not, nothing, you know, you don't have to pay, pay anything to do that. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad that Leslie mentioned <clears throat> the, um, the hypothesis where you can post um, your reviews and that also is free. So, you know, nothing stops you as, um, especially as an early career researcher to expose what you do, make it, you know, Put it out there for others to um to enjoy and benefit from um we are now in the session where um comments are welcome and um, questions are welcome um we want to know what you think or what questions you have but i'm going to just start with um <coughs> a question that um someone sent by email i think it's Annalise Tello. actually Annalise, you're here i think would it be possible shane to allow Annalise Tello to to ask her question maybe she can elaborate more if she's willing, otherwise I may read it out. Hi, um, yeah, my, my question was about how, um, how the reviews are actually sort of curated, like how you 
identify um, people to do the reviews of the preprints. And, and I saw at the beginning that it looks like you're um, aggregating different serv preprint servers or, or preprint review services as well, but just a little bit more about that process. Okay, so yeah, um, um, thanks for mentioning the preprint service because I didn't talk about that. Then um, because we started building this <clears throat> from scratch and building it along the line of allowing researchers to use it because we are building it based on this feedback. We, we, were, we have been experimenting with just a few things. This is why there are fewer groups because we want to make sure that we get it right. And in the same vein um, for preprint servers, we currently are formally linked to two preprint servers and those are um, <clears throat> biophysics, sorry, <laughs> bioarchive and medarchive. So those are the two main thing. If you go on site and search for article, um, the results you get are indexed to these two preprint servers. Um, beyond that as well, we can re re review, um, reveal um, activities on um, Research Square, some of the content that Biophysics Collab ha has on there <clears throat> is um, on Research Square, um, I think. And then we've been um, working to re re um, display things um, linked to CLO preprint, um, that is ongoing now. So we are able to do that, but currently in a formal position, we're just indexing for such purposes, we're only indexing to preprint service. I hope that answered your question. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, someone has their hand up, um, Marufu. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Hello, can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I want to say thank you so much for this uh, wonderful opportunity and privilege and uh, innovative idea you are coming up with from, uh, uh, but my concern is how can we researcher and uh, a reviewer also benefit and get ourselves registered on the platform? Because I've heard you said it is free and um, of what relevance will it not be to us researcher? May I, I would like to have a better understanding of, of it. And is this something we can also add in our profile, like our CVs and the rest of them, you know? I could answer that question, Godwin. Yes, go for it. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so thank you for the question. And I, and I think, um, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, obviously I think preprints have this obvious benefit that the authors are able to share their work. And then, of course, you know, one of the things that uh, it lacks is, a, is peer review on the, on the outset. And so in order to actually have that peer review layer, obviously we need a lot of participants. And one of the, I think, great benefits is that, you know, um, anyone can can review and comment on a preprint, right? So what, it's a public product, and anyone can review and, and comment on a on a preprint. And so, so one of the sort of community based groups that exists on Society is is pre review, um, where you could actually review any preprint that you want. And and what happens on that platform is that then the review actually gets posted to Zenodo and gets a, a digital object identifier, a DOI. And that means that now your, your review itself is, is a scholarly product that has a, a, a link that you could add to your CV, for example, right? And so that, that will get then indexed on Society as well so that it can be visible um, for anybody who wants to see that review and it, it will get posted back onto BioArchive itself as well. So, uh, you know, I start, strongly encourage all sort of early career researchers who have been, you know, uh, wanting to participate in the review system, sort of just waiting for to be asked. You know, I think that's a current limitation of the system in which you typically have, you know, not, um, you know, very few uh, numbers of people are actually able to participate and it's putting a great strain on the system, right? So, you know, the, 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 literature, the scientific literature is expand, is, is uh, expanding exponentially. And of course, like the current version of review is, is crushing under the weight of that, right? We already know how long it takes in order to get review of, of papers. It takes, a, it takes a very long time and, and um, it requires, um, 
you know, um, very few people to, to review a huge number of, uh, a huge amount of the literature. And so I think an obvious solution to that is to, to open up review to the expertise wherever it lives, including all of you early career researchers who are experts in your science, right? That you are actually, you are the ones doing the research. You have extreme, um, you know, specific knowledge on, on the areas in which you're able to comment. And, 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 you know, if we want to get to a new ecosystem in which we are all actually you know, contributing to this review in a way that makes it much more sustainable in the future, um, and especially in this new sort of um, uh, future where that's built upon um, preprints and, and post-publication review, then we can all participate in this. So, so you know, I think pre-review is, is a good mechanism where you might be able to, you could actually get a digital object identifier for your review, and that is a thing. It is now a research product. It is a piece of scholarly, uh, it's a scholarly product that you can put on your CV, and that doesn't require any other infrastructure structure, it doesn't require anything else, you know, it just, these are things that already exist where you could then have a very clear link to your, you know, review contribution. Thank you, Prachi. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that some people have um, started leaving, so um, may I ask Shen to please share um, a feedback form? Um, it's very, I think it's three questions on it. We'd just like to know what you think about this and um, make any suggestions. To continue, I will ask um, David Ashbrook, who has posted a question, if he's happy to you know, make his comments um, by himself. Otherwise, I can just read it out. But, um. Hi. Um, so yeah, I was just asking if there is a sort of how-to document of how to use it, because I managed to get logged in. I've saved a list. Is it possible to get many different lists or is it one per account? And I saw that you had that really nice annotation of the uh, papers on there. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. How do you do that? Um, <laughs> um, okay, the last one, really. Um, how you do it is um, like Prachi stated. Um, we've been experimenting with that, and um, so that's an experiment experimentation stage you, you are seeing there. But we are very soon going to you know activate it for other users. But David, just as you are very interested, I'll be in touch with you, um, and then maybe I can get you to do it as an experimenting. Um, face as well and um, if you like that you know drop me a yeah that'd be great thank you awesome i got you down then um and, <laughs> and then the other aspects of whether you can have more than one list at the moment you can only have one um, with your <laughs> login but it's um a, a feedback we've had um from other researchers as well and it's in the pipeline somewhere we're thinking about it um, but no work has been started on that yet um shane has um just shared a, a Google Doc um, form, please. I would be very grateful if all of you can just um, complete it for us. It take you one minute even. Um, can I just ask them? Um, Prachi did mention um. Oh no, someone. Okay, no, not a question. Prachi did um mention um pre-review, pre-review. Yes, and Daniela is here. I'm just gonna ask her to you know chip in because Daniela's um group and um, pre-review is also a group on site as well as a platform. So Daniela, can you take? Two minutes to explain that to us. Yes, I'm here. You okay. already gave me unmuting <laughs> <laughs> privileges. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, uh, for organizing this. Uh, I always learn more, even though I'm supposed to, to know a lot about, about society already because we are collaborators that I always learn more by participating. Uh, so thanks. And thanks, Prachi, for mentioning pre-review. But uh, yeah, basically, um, we are um, always like trying to improve uh, the platform. We are in fact in the in the, in the uh, process of uh, making new exciting changes. But the the I kind of kind of like the the unique parts of preview. I think they're unique for now. But new 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 um, uh, kind of services are coming up every day. But uh, it's really like the primary audience is for early career researchers. So in designing how people can contribute, we have really thought about, yes, we want to prioritize openness and we, we do believe that openness is the way forward, but we also believe that there should be uh, a choice. There should be a way for, uh, especially for people who have been traditionally like told that they can actually participate uh, to uh, do so anonymously. So, um, and it actually, so then that, that is one feature about pre review is that your, your login, your sign up is via ORCID. So we'll, you will have a chance uh, to publish everything with your public uh, name and it will be linked to your ORCID ID. But you also have a chance to publish with a pseudo name that is assigned to you at the time of sign up. Um, and what that means is that um, you will have this unique uh, pseudo name that you can always publish and it will be anonymous because unless you share what that pseudo name is. 
Um, and uh, you, but but that doesn't mean that you're not accountable for what you write. So in pre review, there's also a code of conduct that we uh, ask everybody to um, uh, to read and uh, abide. Uh, when you sign up. Uh, and so there are ways for other community members as well as for us to flag uh, reviews that are published and, and don't adhere to the code of conduct. And specifically, obviously, there are different ranges of uh, some things that are not uh, cool, uh, but definitely we do not tolerate any, you know, uh, attacks or uh, comments that are like just not in, not with a, with the purpose of providing feedback uh, that is done as constructive and as clear as an actionable, obviously, as, as it could be. Um, so yeah, that's kind of one feature that I think it's very helpful, especially for early career researchers. And um, yeah, the last thing is also another thing you can do in pre-review is to provide a rapid pre-review, which is like just answering a series of yes or no questions that can kind of capture the gist of the pre-review, even though that specifically it's under the lens right now, we're looking at improving that um, and making less of like, oh, you have to say yes or no, uh, because we, as we all know, science is not as white or black. Uh, and so kind of providing better like ways of providing gray areas or like liquor scale answering is in the pipeline. But yeah, thank you for giving me uh, the space to talk about pre review. Thank you, Daniela. Um, and yeah. actually, just want to say today, we published the first pre review that was authored by a lot of early career, uh, a lot of ECR, sorry, eLife ambassadors that have participated to a live stream for Cringe on the club. So that will be, uh, it's also very exciting. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Daniela. Thank you for that. There's a question from Ariadna Garza. Would you like to ask your question or do you want me to read it out? It's okay if you want me to, to yes, ask it is to fine. formulate it. Thank you very much for the space and the opportunity. There is, um, I'm dealing with a big concern about ethics. Part of the circumstances that new researchers more learn actually are related to ethics uh, because it's a topic that nobody wants to acknowledge, to produce, to formulate, to, to formulate or to discuss. But it's important in order to uh, uh, prepare a strong researcher career. So I would like to know your thoughts about the ethical problems that we as researchers could face and how the scientific community will be dealing with ethical problems in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Leslie, would you like to take that question, please? Yes, um, I, I mean, if, if, if I may just, uh, just to, uh, get a little clarification, um, are, are you asking about ethics in, uh, in, in publication or or, or research ethics in uh, a, 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 in a more general sense, you know how, how research is is conducted. If if you wouldn't mind just clarifying that, that would be really helpful. It, it, it could be up to you, but I think it is related. If we are not uh, uh, well trained or uh, sensitized about the ethical concerns and problems and uh, cr criteria then we are going to produce um, publications with the non-ethical basis. So it's up to you. I just want to put this uh, very hot topic on the table. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I, I agree. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's incredibly important, but it is also, um, also a minefield. Uh, and I think there are many, many areas of, of ethics as well. And, and there, you know, there really wouldn't, be time to to go into that um, in, in 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 depth in the you know the five minutes or so that we have left uh, in this webinar. But um, you know just just to maybe um, expand a, a, on a couple of, of ideas uh, around your question. So um, research ethics and, and publication ethics are are things that actually journals um, I, I think do do a great job of of um, let me say, keeping an eye of, uh, overseeing, providing advice on, and, and, and actually journals are a great source of information about research ethics and, and publication ethics. And, um, you know, visiting their, their websites is, is, is a great way of, of finding out uh, information about that. Um, um, in terms of um, 
of, of society and, and, and PRC and, and preprint review. I think uh, one of the, the real advantages is that um, is, is really for sort of publication ethics. So um, a big advantage is that um, preprint review is, is conducted, it's conducted out in the open. So there's nothing going on, you know, behind the scenes that, uh, you know, you, you don't necessarily know about. It's, uh, you know, the idea is, is it is a very transparent environment. Um, you know, anybody can comment on, on a preprint and, and, and state their opinion. Um, it's something that, that we're very aware of um, as well as, as a group on society. So um, we, um, we, we haven't yet, but we are in the process of, of formulating um, our, you know, we're experimenting in this space at the moment, but we're in the process of, of formulating our own policies and expectations that we have of, of reviewers, expectations that we have of, of authors, and, and we're going to be posting those um, on the website. But, um, you know, it, uh, it, it's very relevant because we, um, what we try and do with, with all our peer reviews is, um, is involve um, as, as many... Uh, different uh, people as we can in, in the peer review process. So we're involving early career researchers. We're also inv involving senior researchers, researchers from around the globe, um, you know, researchers with, with, different, um, uh, with different backgrounds. Um, and um, it's really important that everybody has a voice in, in, in our process of consolidating the reports. And so it, it's something that we, we think about all the time. Um, probably that's, uh, that's the most I, I will have time to expand upon in, uh, yeah. in this uh, webinar. Thank, thanks, Leslie. Aretna, if you want to send me maybe an email um, and then if there, there can be, you know, I can ask Leslie and Prachi actually to respond more broadly or at length to your question, you know, um, if that would help. We have four minutes. Prachit, do you have any any thoughts about the ethics thing that you want to add for one minute? And then sure, I, yeah. I, no, I was just going to say I wanted to echo Leslie's point about the transparency of, of public review. I think this is a huge benefit for all parties. So having, you know, rather than sort of a discussion that goes on behind closed doors and then some sort of editorial judgment that is just uh you know very um you know uh, binary to actually have the richness of that that information publicly available to readers is extremely useful and also to authors right to make sure you know that authors have recourse to be able to discuss that publicly in return instead of just be at the mercy of of um you know behind the scenes discussion and so that i think is a, is a huge benefit um so that everybody can see so even if they're you know i think one big big concern of, about public review and having everyone participate is that you, you don't necessarily control, you know, conflict of interest and things like that. So, so of course, you know, this is all built on top of, of platforms such as, as BioArchive, which uh, um, requires authors to disclose their competing interests. But then when you come to reviewers, you know, how do you know that any, since anybody can comment whether there's a conflict of interest of, of a reviewer onto the work if there's not sort of checks being done up front. So this is a, a question that we get frequently. And I think, again, the transparency is is a is a very uh, huge benefit that, that actually you know that there can be again recourse and public discussion in order to um, have th these conversations out in the open such that even if there is some behind the scenes um, you know uh, connection between people in, in in whatever way that might be that there is you know it is still available for other people to comment on and refute and rebut and authors to have recourse and all of those things so I think it's a good start and these are good important questions that we do need to grapple with and that many of the groups that are sort of layering on top of of um, preprints in order to do public review um, are thinking about having their own policies and such um, but it's uh, it's a good question that I think all of us need to need to keep in mind about again i think that the we we are achieving i think something that that the, the secret review system is is un, you know yes there are there are checks and things that are happening by journals but again just by virtue of things not being transparent we cannot ever know you know what what exactly is is transpiring and this is something that is is just like the ultimate benefit i think thank you Prachi. um and that brings us nicely to the end of the of this webinar. Um, thank you so much, Prachi and Leslie, um, for your time and being here today to share your experiences with us. If you are interested in future ECR webinars, we as eLife 
will invite you to explore the past editions we've had. Um, um, the, the tag is ECR Wednesday webinar series, which are presented by eLife, which discuss a wide range of topics that are of interest to early career researchers. Um, Shane will drop a link um, to the collection in the chat. Thank you, Shane. Um, we will announce next edition soon and look forward to seeing you there. But may I also ask and um, add that if you want to set up your group on Society or on pre review, um, just get in touch as well. Um, we provide technical advice as, as well to help you uh, if you're just starting off and you don't know how it all works. And uh, we can support you to go through that um, and make sure that you can get it right. Um, so far now, we are doing self selecting for groups to appear on Society. So if you call that us, there are some queues, but it's not a very long queues. Um, and we're waiting for Acadia Science Group to join society because it's just in the pipeline. So on that note, thank you everyone for your time. And then thank you for completing the feedback form that we sent out. And until next time, thank you. See you soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.